All right, thank you everyone for joining us. Today we're going to be talking about ransomware prevention, five ways to avoid a crisis. We'll be discussing how to survive any disaster with a proper backup and disaster recovery solution. Um, you also see the Gartner logos here. We were a Gartner 2015 cool vendor in business continuity and disaster recovery and a Gartner 2016 visionary in the disaster recovery as a service magic quadrant. So I wanted to make sure I share that with all of you. Um, a couple of quick housekeeping announcements before we get started, and uh, just to introduce myself as well. My name is Carla Federico. I'm the Director of Marketing at Infrascale, and um, I'd love to chat with you after the presentation. If you have more questions or comments, um, I have all my contact information here, so please do reach out to me. Also, we'd love for you to join the conversation. You can follow us on Twitter at Infrascale. You can find us on Facebook, um, on LinkedIn. So we definitely love, love to chat with you. I frequently get asked if we are recording the, pre recording the presentation, if there's a replay video. So yes, we are recording. And it will be posted at infrascale.com slash webinars within about 24 hours. So you can always um, tune in there if you want a replay video. And then if you have questions throughout the presentation, please use the question tool and type in throughout um, any questions or comments that might come up and we will definitely come to those. So let's take a look at the agenda for today. First, we'll be looking at key trends in 2016. So we'll then talk about how to avoid ransomware, those five steps to keep protected, and then we'll come to the Q&A as well. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in then. So what we're looking at and what we're facing today is that every company relies on data and systems uptime for survival. And this is because globalization has created a really highly competitive market for any size business, both large or small. And with these really competitive times, no business can afford to lose out on opportunities, on new customers, on sales and revenue due to unplanned outages or due to ransomware. So every organization's IT system needs to be up and running at all times. So we know that implementing a proper business continuity and disaster recovery plan is a must for every organization. And now if not, this is, this is how much it costs a business um, per hour of downtime. And this is really what you have at risk if you don't have a proper solution in place. So uh, small companies lost an average of $8,000 per hour for each hour of downtime. Large organizations reported losses of $600,000 per hour. And then right there in the middle, the average cost per hour of downtime for any business is over $200,000. So really consider what happens to your business when your systems go down, even for this small amount of time. You lose all communication with business partners, with customers, with employees. And so how would you deal with this type of situation? And more importantly, do you know what an unplanned outage or what a ransomware attack like this that would put your business out of communications, how much would it cost your business? So what do you have at risk? So any of these unforeseen situations, you really need to ensure that you have a proper BDR plan. And of course, apart from the usual technical issues that your, your IT system faces, there are other just natural disasters, hurricanes, storms, tsunamis. There are um, all types of downtime, and we'll talk about that in just a minute, in addition to ransomware. So here are some of the, the barriers to BDR adoption. So now that we know how much it costs a business, uh, why hasn't everyone adopted a proper solution to avoid downtime, to avoid ransomware? Well, this is why 36% of those surveyed, and this is a survey of companies ranging from 100 to 5,000 employees, and most businesses said that they simply couldn't afford a, a failover solution. And then after that, the next highest barriers to adoption were insufficient IT resources and 
compatibility and complexity issues. And if you want a copy of this report, um, please just let me know in the questions and I'm happy to share this with you as well. It's our 2016 DRAS Attitudes and Adoption Report. So really just how expensive is it? How is it too expensive for the majority of customers to, to have a solution in place? Well, it really depends on the scenario. And traditional backup and disaster recovery invariably means trade-offs. Trade-offs between cost and RTO, or recovery time objective. So, of course, we on one end of the spectrum, we start with off-site tape backup. So, tape backup's really cheap, but it takes days to recover. And cloud backup, appliance backup, anywhere along this continuum, you have those trade-offs that you need to make. Cold, warm, hot site DR. Even with, with hot site disaster recovery on the other end, you have the primary and secondary systems running simultaneously, so the data is mirrored to the secondary server in real time. So both systems are containing identical information, which, which is ideal, but it's so expensive. Now, the recovery time is in extremely fast in that case, but look at how much you're paying. So enter disaster recovery as a service, and DRAS lets you quickly reboot and virtualize VMs, keep your users productive while you fix the root cause of the outage, and that's where you really want to be. So it has the lowest cost with the fastest recovery time objective. Now, it can only deliver on this promise if you find the right vendor, but what we find is that only the biggest companies can afford to fail over their systems. It leaves 68% of companies using mere backup as a disaster recovery solution. And now here's what I, I mentioned just a moment ago. We would come to the, the top causes of downtime. So on the left here, we're looking at the pervasiveness of downtime. And in the last 24 months, 91% uh, of data center managers had experienced downtime. And nearly one in two, 47% had experienced an outage this year. Now taking a look at the right, we're looking at the top causes of downtime. So not surprising to anyone, um, hardware failure, human error, account for over three quarters of all downtime. And then natural disasters account for less than 5%, but still, we need to account for both those micro and macro disasters. Now getting into some trends next about ransomware, let's take a look at what we've been seeing this year with ransomware. So in Q1 of 2016, almost 3,000 new malware modifications were detected. And these were reported, of course, we know that Ransomware gets activated by a user, so the end user lets it in and it starts modifying all the files on the system. And even worse, one single user can have a network effect that then spreads through the entire system, and one user can then bring down an entire organization. Now, if you get one of these ransom demands, paying it is going to involve uh, paying an e-currency or cryptocurrency like Bitcoin. And then, once the hackers verify the payment, they provide the decryptor software, and the computer will start the long process of decrypting all your files, which is why 72% of ransomware victims were unable to access their data for two days. And in some cases, this took up to five days because it is a slow process. And we know they're getting away with it because of the amount that's been paid in ransomware. So over $200 million has been paid in ransomware in the first three months of 2016, so Q1 of this year. Now compare that to 2015, all of 2015, there was just 25 million paid in ransomware in comparison. Now, how do you know if you're infected with ransomware? Well, here are some of the, of the symptoms 
that you'll know if you've experienced a ransomware attack. So if you suddenly can't open your normal files, you're getting errors that the file's corrupted or maybe has the wrong extension. If you have a window that opens to a program that you just can't close, usually this is one of the, the ransom messages explaining how to unlock your files, how to pay the, the, the Bitcoin, and how much you need to pay. If you have a program that warns there's a countdown until the ransom increases, or that you won't be able to decrypt your files, or if you see any files and directories of how to decrypt files or decrypt instructions, if you see anything renamed at all, then those are all signs that you are infected with, with ransomware. And now it's, it works slowly, and it starts with the old files on your system. It's all based on the last date opened or the last date modified. So then you have no idea for weeks or maybe even months because it's working slowly in the background. And it's modifying all the files on your system until you get one of these ransom demands, so one of these triggered messages. And once the files are all encrypted, the hackers display this screen explaining how to unlock your files. Well, if you, can if you take a look at some of these examples in the past, Ransom started in the three to $500 range. But fast forward to 2016, and companies are being hit with ransoms in the thousands of dollars. So going back to the, the cost per hour of downtime that we just looked at, how long would it take you to restore systems to pre-infection? And consider, would that downtime be costlier or more disastrous than paying a ransom? Right now, most of us think of two options when, if you get infected, that since it's working slowly over time, that having a backup solution in place and also regularly testing those backups to make sure they're running properly, that's one really critical part of protecting your business. Now, if you don't have access to one of those recent backups, do you have no choice but to pay the ransom? So it's really a consideration of What's your cost per hour of downtime and how would that affect your business? All right, so I want to launch a quick poll here at this point. You guys have heard a bit from me and I'd love to hear from you. So I'm going to launch this poll. When it comes to ransomware, which of these is you? A, yes, I've been a victim of ransomware. B, no, I haven't experienced this type of security breach. Or C, I don't think I'll be affected by ransomware. So I'll give everyone a moment to vote there. So far we have about 30% of you have voted. So I'll give everyone another moment to vote. Now we're at 70% have voted. All right, so last chance to reach forward and vote for one of these options if you want to participate in the poll. All right, let me go ahead and share those results. All right, you should be seeing the results on your screen there then. When it comes to ransomware, which of these is you? A, yes, I've been a victim of ransomware. We had 11% 11 of you said, yes, I've been a victim of ransomware. I would love to hear more details of that, what the situation was. Um, did you pay the ransom or did you roll back to a backup? Um, you can use the question tool if you want to share some, some of those stories. 89% um, of you know I haven't experienced this type of security breach, and then 0%, I don't think I'll be affected by ransomware. Wonderful. All right, let's go ahead and hide these results and jump back into the presentation. So what you should be seeing now is we're back to the presentation slides.
Okay, so let's see. Can you guys confirm in the questions and comments that you can see the next slide up here? Okay, so it, look, so it looks like we, I did get that confirmation. Thank you. Um, so what we're looking at next is our mission, which essentially here I added your mission, um, because I think we're all here for the same reason. And at Infrascale, we aim to eradicate downtime and data loss. And it's a really simple mission. Um, of course, hopefully you're here because that's your mission as well. And obviously we can't eliminate the causes of downtime, but we do aim to eliminate the pain that a business experiences in the event of an outage. So let's take a look at a couple of screenshots. Now this is from my backup and recovery account within Infrascale. So if I were to have an outage, um, by default, Infrascale keeps everything. So I have every version ever backed up, and I can just roll back to any date that I choose. So I can back up with a low RPO, recovery point objective, or low RTO, recovery time objective. And since I regularly back up my machine, I can just recover my useful files and keep working. Now, that's a really important point, so I'm going to repeat that one more, more time. It's that by default, Infrascale keeps everything forever. So that, that importance of forever archiving is really critical because most BDR systems out there are going to age content out after a few weeks, after maybe a month. And ransomware can take months to get into your systems discreetly. So it's not just the idea of having an old backup system in place, but you need a backup system with a forever archiving component built in. Now, my Infrascale account isn't just my, the software that's on my machine. So here's a look at the Infrascale dashboard. So from the Infrascale dashboard, I can access monitoring alerts. I can also access all of the reports for any of my backups. I can view account usage. And it's one centralized management dashboard that gives me access to all of this information. Now I also have account level details. So with account level details, I can take a look at analytics of all of the machines that I'm backing up. I can see the last 24 hours, last 30 days, or a calendar view. So what we did is we took these analytics and we created a monitoring alert. And what we did with this monitoring alert, we call it anomaly detection. And with anomaly detection, what we can do is take these account level details and give you an alert if a certain threshold is passed. So let's take a look at anomaly detection in action. So here's a quick view of how to actually set up those anomaly settings. So going through how to set this up, simply go to settings and then monitoring in the dashboard. And then in the monitoring page, you see the enable anomaly detection setting. And here we let you set the threshold and a warning's released when that threshold's passed. So what we're doing is we're calculating a rolling average number of modified files over time for each device. And if the modified file count for a backup passes the predetermined threshold, then we release a warning. So if you're subscribing to error events, then you'll get an email alert. And it'll also automatically appear in the general monitoring page where you can see more info. So if you see an event, you definitely want to investigate it. And then you can also open the details to see things like backup duration and total files processed, or even uh, in the Manage tab that you just saw, download the logs if you want to investigate at a file level. So typical users normally back up maybe five to 10 files per day, but anything three to four times that is going to be cause for an investigation.
So that's how easy it is to set up the anomaly detection setting. But what if backup and, and disaster recovery, what if just mere backup simply isn't enough? So that's where DRAS comes in, disaster recovery as a service. And it lets you quickly fail over your systems and supports DR to be on demand, like in this scenario. So in this situation, here are some end users uh, simply working along, and unknown to them, they're about to experience an unexpected outage. So um, you see those red X's there, similar uh, either a ransomware attack, uh, any type of outage that could be hardware error, uh, human error, a hardware failure, excuse me, or a natural disaster. So with on-demand failover, you can simply log in from any browser, even if you're on a laptop, a tablet, or a smartphone. You can roll back to a previous date and instantly recover a clean version of the entire environment, not just files and folders. And that way, everyone keeps working. The whole process can happen in just about 15 minutes. But here's a more detailed way to look at it. So let's take a look at the traditional backup flow on the left in comparison to DRAS on the right. So here's your traditional backup and recovery. It has your production box and a backup server next to it. It's then copying data to some storage. It could be offsite tape, uh, on-prem disk, the cloud. So it's simply copying data. And when a disaster happens, you need to then copy that data back out of storage, and then you need to reconfigure, reboot. This all takes a lot of time. Recovery here can take days. But DRAS is very, very different on the right. So with DRAS, we don't want to have to copy everything back and forth, moving the data twice or more. We simply want to spin up a working environment where the data is. So we virtualize and create up to 200 machines on the fly, and we reconstruct your data center infrastructure where your data is sitting. And this is really important because of how we saw ransomware has been uh, changing over, over this, the course of what we saw 2015 to 2016, the amount paid in ransom. If we recall back to one of the slides in the beginning, 25 million paid in ransom in 2015, over 200 million paid in Q1 of 2016. So the primary issue used to be individual data loss. But now ransomware, we know it can spread over an entire network. And ransomware really represents the threat of data loss, but also business interruption and downtime. So that's what InfraScale really aims to solve. We're trying to eradicate downtime, focus on business continuity, and because those modern, modern ransomware attacks will spread over that network, encrypting data on servers and on network folders and other computers, it's really important to focus on that disaster recovery and failover. So what we're going to be seeing in maybe five to 10 years that backup solutions are going to disappear. And they're going to be replaced by on-demand failover and DRAS solutions. So of course, we have a backup and recovery solution for you. But what you should be looking at is our failover solution. So I want to run one more quick poll here for you guys. So let me go ahead and launch this next poll. When it comes to backup and disaster recovery, which of these is you? A, I can confidently roll back to a previous backup within 15 minutes. B, I wish I had backup and disaster recovery but can't afford it. Or C, I still don't think I'll be affected by ransomware. And we've got 55% of you have voted so far, so I'll give everyone a minute to participate here.
All right, we've got 75% of you have voted. So last chance to reach forward and participate. All right, so let's go ahead and close this poll down and share the results. Right now, we are evenly split between A and B. We have 50% of you have answered A. I can confidently roll back to previous backup within 15 minutes. Curious for those of you who answered A, can you confidently roll back within five minutes? And then another 50% answered, I wish I had backup in disaster recovery, but simply can't afford it. So we are going to talk about uh, about the cost and the misperceived cost in just a minute because it, it really is possible for you to get a failover solution at the cost of backup. So we'll talk about that in just one more minute here. So coming back to the slides, let me make sure that everyone has that up for their screen. So now we're looking at the top five data protection must-haves. So like I mentioned, Infrascale is a disaster recovery as a service company. We're using the cloud to eradicate downtime and data loss. Now, of course, we cannot prevent those disasters from occurring, but mitigating the pain and the disruption that any company feels, that's what we're equipping you to do. So let's take a look at these top five data protection must-haves. First is to avoid reserved infrastructure. And here's why. What we saw a minute ago was those trade-offs, that some solutions can achieve the recovery time that we want, but they simply don't achieve the cost that we want. So here, um, what you're seeing on the left is how most of those DR solutions are architected. You have the production site that replicates over to the failover site, but because of the bandwidth, the people, and the software involved, it can take up to three times as much to set up a proper DR solution. And then on top of the expense to implement, it's complex to test and to use, and it's vulnerable to hackers since security isn't built right into it. So avoiding reserved infrastructure, but you can still get on-demand failover. And that's what InfraScale can deliver. Now next, number two, we want to avoid hardware-heavy solutions. So really, you should forget those hardware-heavy solutions. They should be avoided. You can easily do that by utilizing cloud spillover. So this scenario is going to sound familiar. If you take a look at the left, more space equals more appliance. So you buy an appliance as your data grows, that, that appliance fills up. And then you buy another one and fill that up and really continue this cycle where you can see how quickly that gets pretty expensive. But taking a look at the right, where more space equals more cloud, this would simply be the last hardware appliance you'd ever need, a one year unit that you could send one terabyte or 100 terabytes. And you can do that by utilizing cloud spillover technology. It intelligently spills data over from the device to the cloud, all based on policies that you set regarding the age and the value of your data. That brings us to number three, which is design it end to end. So you want a solution that can back up any device, and that includes servers, both physical and virtual servers, desktops, laptops, mobile devices. You want support for any operating system, so not just Windows, but Linux, Unix, VMware, and Hyper-V as well. Deployment in any form. So the type of form factor, including physical appliances, virtual appliances, or agent level backups. And then storage in any cloud. So you should have the flexibility of storing your data in any cloud, meaning 
the vendor's cloud, your own private cloud, or popular third-party clouds like Amazon Web Services or Windows Azure. Okay, and then you also want to recover everything. So we allow you to recover anything from an entire database server down to mailbox level. So you can even preview each message for search and recovery if needed. And then you want to be able to boot anywhere. So um, we want the ability to boot on the appliance and in the cloud, and then fail back any systems as well. So InfraScale does let you protect all of your data from mobile devices to desktops and laptops and physical or virtual servers. We also support over 100 versions of operating systems. So you can't get more complete coverage than that. And that brings us to number four, which is prioritize recovery and testing. So again, think about the old way of doing this here. So when it, came, when it comes to recovery, imagine what you would normally do at, say, 2 a.m. on a Saturday night in, in the case of any outage. You'd have to get up out of bed, change, go to your car, drive to the data center, start recovering from backups. But imagine just reaching over to the nightstand, grabbing your iPad, and bringing back 100 servers in the right order, all within 15 minutes guaranteed. And most of the time, it takes about 30 to 60 seconds but just imagine how much easier that would be and how simple that would be. Same with testing. So testing was always such a hassle that you'd only do it once a year. But imagine being able to do it every day. So that all brings us to the last, let's see, the last number five here, which is all about security and encryption. So the fifth must-have is simply security and encryption. You don't want to ignore data privacy. So rather than other solutions that take raw files and send them to the cloud, InfraScale uses a military-grade double-blind encryption system to protect data. And this is really best practice as compared to other solutions. And this is encryption locally, in transit, and at rest. It's really the only way to ensure that data is truly secure. So we've covered quite a bit so far. Now, of course, we want to talk about how much does it cost. So let's take a look at some pricing comparisons and how we address the issue of cost. We deliver on-demand failover at the price of backup, and we can guarantee that 15-minute failover, which nobody else can offer. So we do this by using intelligent software with built-in deduplication, compression, and WAN acceleration technologies. We've eliminated costly hardware. A single 1UDR unit can scale from one terabyte of protected storage to over 100 terabytes. And you can bolt on an unlimited amount of cloud space for long-term storage and archiving using intelligent cloud spillover. So pricing with InfraScale lets you save up to 70% in comparison to others. Just a low monthly subscription, and it's all based on the number of terabytes protected. So you only pay for what you protect. So here's a more detailed look at it. This chart helps summarize all the key criteria that you should be looking at. Is it affordable? Does it offer cloud spillover? Is it complete coverage? Do I have push button failover? Is the encryption and security at the levels that I need? And what about the recovery time? So as you can see, the major vendors just don't stack up the way that InfraScale does. And this comparison we're happy to share with you. We looked at Axiom, Datto, Barracuda, Unitrends, and InfraScale. So what we'd like to do now is um, we are going to jump into the Q&A, but for everyone who's joining us here today, I'd love to extend an offer to you. We know that ransomware and downtime, we know now what it costs a business and we know the risks there. So we are aiming to eradicate downtime and data loss. And we're doing that with on-demand cloud failover. 
So I want to extend this free 60-day offer to everyone for joining us today. You can test it out for yourself and see for yourself. You don't have to take my word for it. And you can use the question tool to take advantage of this offer. Just type in 60 days free and I'll get you set up with that. I also have one last poll that I'm going to launch here. I'd love your participation in this last poll. And then I'll dive into the Q&A as we have this last pull up. All right, so we've got that last poll going now. It looks like 36% of you have voted so far. So I'll leave this poll up for a bit and give everyone a chance to participate in that. And then let's go ahead and take a look at the Q&A. So first question, great question here. Can you give a quick overview of the company history? Um, yeah, definitely. So Infrascale was founded in 2011. We're headquartered in Los Angeles and we're venture backed. We have 150 employees worldwide and we're providing secure failover solutions to over a thousand MSP partners across the globe. In turn, we're protecting millions of endpoints and devices and about 20 billion data objects on our global grid worldwide. Next question, you didn't share specific costs. What exactly is the pricing model? So pricing can start at just a few hundred dollars if you're using, if you're looking at cloud storage. Um, or our appliance units range from just a, a couple of terabytes up to several hundreds of terabytes. We have a 1U unit through a 9U unit. So um, that's if you have physical environments, of course. If you have VMware only, you can scale up to nearly 200 terabytes protected. So again, it's simply um, paying per, uh, per terabyte protected or just for the data that you use. So how much data do you have? I'll ask a question back to you. Next question says, what changes regarding cost if a cloud backup server needs to be spun up? Are there costs associated with spinning up in the cloud? So no additional costs, it's all included in the pricing, simply by the amount of data protected, not the number of recoveries. That's also what allows you to test your recoveries regularly. You can test every day if you'd like. Um, and we also offer 24 by 7 support, that's 365 days a year, so you can always reach out to us. Are there any overage costs in the cloud as limits are met? And if I go over capacity, is my data not backed up? That's a really great question. Um, so if you go over capacity, we'll contact you to let you know that you need more space. You're also going to receive warnings as you get close to capacity, but we're never going to leave you hanging without your scheduled backups. Your data is still protected. Next question says, you mentioned the appliance can support 100 different operating systems. What does it not support? So we support Windows, Mac, and, and many others, just to be more specific. All versions of Windows, all versions of Linux, Unix, uh, OpenServer, Novell Netware, Solaris, HPUX, and AIX. And then we also have bare metal bootable for Windows and uh, bare metal bootable for Linux coming soon as well. Uh, do you support Red Hat and CentOS? So yes, uh, both common Linux distributions, we do support those. Do you support Windows Server 2003? Yes, we do. Is the backup real time, or can we determine the frequency of when each server is backed up slash snapshotted? Um, so yes, the protection policies are completely configurable. You have access to do that in your dashboard. So you can set it to protect every 15 minutes, every 24 hours, really whatever you'd like. Next question asks, for VMs, can you only get the most recent or can you go back to checkpoints? So you can go back to any point in time that you have backed up and you set your backup and retention policies. 
Next question says, do you leverage data dedupe? What sort of dedupe efficiency do you get? So we have up to 90% deduplication rate. Of course, that depends on the, the types of data and types of files, but we do have a very powerful deduplication technology built in. Okay, uh, next question says, are there minimum bandwidth requirements? So at least a one megabit connection is required. Um, because you're buffering on the appliance, the amount of dedicated bandwidth that you need to the cloud is really far less than you'd assume. Also, so like I just mentioned, we have that uh, up to 90% deduplication rate. So it's also important to note our appliance allows you to throttle based off of speed. So you can set the speed in specific time frames. And because you have that, those throttling capabilities, you can trickle the data. So your bandwidth doesn't really matter. You have the local data stored on the appliance, and you can push up on your schedule. So if you want, you could front load it at night for, for a little bit at a time, or you could seed if you need that initial push up as well. How does the appliance throttle bandwidth usage during production times? So um, the appliance also has a, a powerful bandwidth shaping tool, so you can decide how much bandwidth it should use at different times. Uh, I think this is this question came through before I before I addressed it, but um, do you have um, what is your support like? Do you have online support? So yes, um, we have 24 by 7 U.S. based support. It's 365 days a year. Um, half of that support team is in Los Angeles. Half of that team is in Salt Lake City. We have support via email, live chat, ticketing. We also have a knowledge base and a phone line with a one-hour SLA. So that's regardless of the time, day or night. Um, can you replicate to multiple cloud services? Yes. We support Amazon, Azure, and Infrascale's own cloud service. Um, also, you can also use your own cloud if you if you have data center that you're using. Um, where are your data centers? How many do you have? So we have 16 global points of presence. We have 12 data centers throughout the U.S. Um, we have Canada, the U.K., Australia, South Africa, and South America. Um, another quick note on our data centers. All of our data centers are Tier 3 and Tier 4 with biometric credential requirements, redundant cooling systems, et cetera, et cetera. Um, are you SOX compliant? Yes, um, we're SOX and HIPAA compliant. Um, we do take security very seriously. All of our data centers comply with uh, Sarbanes-Oxley, PCI, Safe Harbor, SAS 70, SSAE 16, CGIS, and then, of course, um, yes, SOX and HIPAA. We also sign business associate agreements. And um, the data is encrypted at 256-bit AES locally. It's sent over an SSL and then encrypted again at 256-bit AES. So if you want to take it a, a, an extra step further, you can with UltraSafe Max. You can not only define the password, but you can also define the encryption key itself. So for those of you on the line who are subject to any regulatory frameworks, definitely um, whoever you go with, make sure that the vendor you choose has that compliance factor built in. Okay, next question says, should we have a backup of our backup or do you replicate our data and bring it back for us? How redundant are your data centers? So great question on redundancy and replication. Uh, we replicate to another machine within the same data center in case that, that cluster goes down. And then we also replicate to another data center in a different state or geographic region. So that's in the event of a problem at the data center. And then most of our customers also keep a replicated copy. And since we keep replicated copies of all our protected data, really redundancy isn't an issue, especially with critical data, you can never have too much protection, right? Okay, um, is there a setting to allow high priority backups versus lesser valued data if space is limited? So yes, there is a setting for that. You set the priority based on the age and the value of your data. Um, those are all policies that you set within the dashboard. 
Um, next question says, my problem is that the computer itself was stolen. I had a Windows image backup, but I can't restore it to a new computer. Can you do that? Um, yes, we can. That's bare metal recovery to dissimilar hardware. We do support that. Uh, next question says, how does the MSI work for mass deployment? So our MSI builder uh, solves a great problem. It's deployment for installation across all devices. So we built out a flexible and intelligent MSI wizard for mass deployment. Um, when you build your MSI, you just define what to back up and when, and then you set a date for it to expire as well. So you set the amount of time that you're allowing for your deployment. And then the next time that any user logs into their computer, the InfraScale MSI is going to detect that the user's logged in. It will verify with the cloud that the user exists, and if it does, it will automatically start backing it up. So it does run silently. The end user probably won't know it's installed and running. Um, but if you want, at the same time, you can deploy it as user visible for the IT manager or for anyone who'd, who'd need access to that. Um, next question says, how do you handle DNS to point to the working servers? Simple round robin would be a problem. So there are a few ways to handle DNS. Managed DNS is usually what we suggest for distributed work environments, but we also support point-to-point -point firewalls and MPLS connections. So there's a few different ways that we can handle the network failover. Okay, great questions, guys. Keep them coming. Um, next question says, is this compatible with my WAN accelerators, like steel heads? What about the challenge with spending excessive time on replication issues? Um, so great question. You want to look at WAN acceleration and over-the-wire deduplication and make sure that the replication speed there is fast. We use both of these technologies with data compression built into our solution. So some solutions are going to require that you buy a WAN acceleration system, but we've built that right in. And then we have the patented deduplication technology I mentioned uh, earlier when the question about dedupe came up. So that also um, allows us to dramatically reduce the data payload that gets pushed over the wire. Okay, um, the next question says, is InfraScale an agent-based backup, or does it communicate with the hypervisor? Do I have to install agents on devices and servers? So for agent-based or agentless, we support both. What we recommend is that within the data center, you use the agentless approach and connect directly to the hypervisor. But for things like maybe a Unix server or Linux running on Metal, we have agents there. Um, all right. If we remove a system from DR, how do we assure that all references to that server or data has been removed from the cloud? What do you do when data needs to be deleted, and how is it removed from your data centers? So when data needs to be deleted, um, secure multi-pass delete is utilized, and that ensures that data is completely and safely destroyed. Okay, um, are your data centers high availability? How is this different from HA, HA in VMware? So HA is different from DR. Um, HA is generally concerned with real-time replication. So if you mess up your production copy, then you synchronize that to your replicated copy. So our solution is far less expensive um, than HA. Does your solution integrate with RMMs and PSAs like ConnectWise or Kaseya? Great question. Yes, we do. And that uh, ConnectWise event, IT Nation, is coming up next month. Hope to see you guys all there. Let's see. We have time for a few more questions here. Where's the customer portal available? So um, that would be our dashboard. It's available through any browser. So it can be accessed by any computer, any tablet, or a smartphone. Um, you can simply just log into any browser and get going um, in the dashboard. Okay, how do I get data back on site from the cloud? 
So this is a really good question as well. We move compute to where the data sits. So if you have 500 terabytes of data sitting on the appliance, or if you have 500 terabytes of data sitting in the cloud, we're going to move the VMs and run the VMs where the data is. So it's, it's really removing the bandwidth bottleneck from a hybrid cloud solution where if you have a, a lot of data in a small pipe, you're going to have problems getting that data back down. So using DRAS, we don't require you to move your data back to compute, but instead moving compute to where your data is. So that's how we can boot you up in minutes. We have that 15 minute guarantee, no matter how much data you have. Next question says, what options do you have for IP addressing? So we can set up MPLS networks, we can set up a virtual private network, or we can set up managed DNS. So there are a few options there. Okay, um, do you allow seeding capabilities for those with slow internet pipes? Yes, we do. Do you offer monthly payments? Uh, yes, we offer flexible payment options. We have monthly payment plans available. Um, so it, it makes it pretty easy for, uh, for anyone to start today. Um, we do have hardware as a service, so instead of paying it all up front, we allow you to pay on a monthly installment basis for the 1200 series and the 1500 series. Okay, we have time for just one or two more questions here. Uh, do you offer white labeling for MSPs? Yes, we do, or a completely rebrandable solution. Uh, what sort of margins can I make as an InfraScale partner? So you can set your own downstream price, so you set your margins. Typically, we see a minimum of 30%, up to 43 margin points. Okay, another question from a partner. It says, I have a 100 terabyte opportunity. Can you help me win it? Um, yes, we definitely can. We offer sales support. We offer engineering support. And um, our sales engineers will join your call, speak to your opportunity, answer questions, and, and really help you win the deal. Another question from a partner. Um, do you do anything to help me um, market or do lead gen in my area? So that's a great uh, question. For any of you partners on the line, we're also doing a, um, a, a, a launch of our new partner program. It's this Thursday, October 6th, uh, same time, same place. And you can hear all the details about that there as well. But we do offer co-marketing events, both local and virtual. Uh, they're all co-branded, co-presented, so we work with you to close more business and win more deals. And it looks like we're running right up uh, against the, the hour here, so I do want to thank everyone for joining us. Um, if any other questions or comments come through after this presentation, definitely just reach out to me. Um, I did have my contact information up there and you will be able to watch a replay at infrascale.com slash webinars. So I wanted to thank everyone for your time today. We appreciate you being here and look forward to working with you all in the future. Thanks everyone. Have a great day.